Chris Stevens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Mr. It's a pleasure to see you in the chair, and I, I, could, could I thank uh, everyone who's uh, contributed in this debate so far. And I too, like other members, refer to my register of members' interests, particularly a uh, chair of the PCS parliamentary group and my membership of Glasgow City Unison. And I do. I um, wish uh, my Unison comrades from Barnet all the best, and I'm sure that my successor, the Treasurer of uh, Glasgow City Unison, will be making a substantial contribution to them. Uh, I want to make um, a few points about why I think that it's important that Members of Parliament do provide that solidarity and, to su and support to those taking industrial action, whether it's the Communication Workers' Union, whether it's the RMT, whether it's the Local Government Workers in Scotland. Um, it's, it's quite simply because, as, as an elected representative, you're meeting your constituents. Yep. Mm -hmm. Your constituents have decided to withdraw their labour, and it's an opportunity to find out from them how they feel yep. uh, about, one, the dispute, and how they generally feel mm -hmm. about other issues. And I think that, that is, it's about showing that support, and it's about uh, listening and engaging. And like my honourable friend for Glasgow East, I too want to show my solidarity and support to the government backbenchers for their industrial action today. Because there is a serious point to this, Mr Lee, is that public sector workers will be watching this debate, and amongst all their other trials and tribulations of life, if they're represented by a Conservative Party politician, they'll be asking, well, where were they to, uh, to, to, to represent me, and where were they to uh, speak about my issues? And I think it is a real shame that there was no government backbencher uh, here. Mr Lee, I do want to, uh, I will be referring to the excellent PCS briefing and the research from uh, the TUC in my remarks. But firstly, I think it has to be acknowledged that wage restraint in the public sector has been a complete and utter failure because it is not wages that have driven inflation, it's prices. Particularly energy prices where we have a situation where there is a lack of regulation in the energy market and there's a real feeling out there that the energy regulators are there on behalf of energy companies and not consumers. Mm -hmm. And the government's position seems to be, um, well, we clapped the nurses on a, th uh, on a Thursday night, uh, but we're not going to pay them. Now, could you imagine if the public took that view on energy companies yeah. and decided on a Thursday night, well, I'll tell you what, to these energy companies, we're going to clap you yeah. every Thursday night, Absolutely. but we won't, pay, we won't pay you. Perhaps uh, people will start to listen then. And there's also the issue of the cost of food, uh, Mr Lee. The PCS briefing gives a whole litany of evidence of workers in UK government departments utilising food banks uh, to help them get through their, uh, to, to get through life, including those, Mr Lee, who work for the Department of Work and Pension. So we have people who work in the department, which is a so-called safety net for yep. the general public, who are having to utilise food banks and other affordable food projects uh, and food aid programmes in order for them to get by. And what is the cost, Mr Lee, uh, to benefit payments for those working in government departments. It was at one time 40% of DWP workers were getting tax credits. Could the minister perhaps give us and write to us and tell us what the percentage is in each government department of those who are being paid benefit by the state to uh, top up their wages? This is the political choices, as my honourable friend for Glasgow East pointed out, and others, giving bankers unlimited bonus, bonuses whilst at the same time holding down public servants' pay is completely the wrong priority, particularly, Mr Lee, those public se sector workers who kept the economic wheels turning during the pandemic. It's an absolute ludicrous sense of political priorities. And it's a disgrace that the UK government's approach now seems to be, in response to all the, the, these industrial actions, is to try and roll back on workers' protections and threatening the right to strike. We have the most aggressive anti-trade union laws in the world and have the ludicrous position where trade unions are prohibited uh, from asking their members' opinion either online or in the workplace. Yeah. And isn't it not ironic that it's the Conservative Party, Mr Lee, who had workplace balloting in here to decide their leader and then decided that online are not giving, uh, are not giving trade unions the position to do that and, and to take industrial action before anybody says that, well, there's an economic consequence to that. Well, there was certainly an economic consequence to the leader of the Conservative yeah, Party yeah, yeah, yeah. Than, uh, and, and caused more damage than trade unions have done for many, many years. And as the Honourable Member for East Lothian pointed out, the proposed bill on the minimum service levels does impact on the devolved settlements mm -hmm. with the devolved nations. It's asking, that, it's suggesting that the Transport Secretary of State 
We'll be able to tell the transport minister in Scotland yep. what the minimum service levels would be. Mm -hmm. That's not their job, and that is, yes. quite frankly, a disgrace as well. And I just want to touch, Mr Lee, because I know this has been a long debate, and I know I've got limited time. There's a clear economic case for giving public sector workers the money that they deserve. Yep. 70 pence in every pound of public money ends up in the private sector economy. Whether that's from grants, public sector contracts, and yes, indeed, public sector wages. Because public sector workers spend their wages. They don't put it in a shoe, shoe box and hide it under their bed. They, they actually go out into the, in the private sector and spend that money. And that's why urgent action is now needed uh, uh, to end the in-work poverty. Because what has happened in the UK is that we're seeing an explosion of affordable food projects yep. to help people get by week to week. And that is something that cannot and should not be taking place. Now, I, I do hope that the government do talk about their dialogue and discussion strategy. Trade unions have driven social and political change across these islands. Trade unions exist, Mr Lee, because the chances of bosses being visited by three ghosts at night is unreasonably slim. And it is why... It is why, Mr Lee, that the trade union movement, and I'm a, a proud trade unionist, as they seek changes in this country. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.